When it comes to weapons in D&D, not all of them were created equal, and many are considered to be mechanically subpar. On top of this, the rulebooks don't provide us much detail on these weapons, leaving us to fill in the gaps of how our weapons look and feel. Due to this lack of information, I'd like to go through and examine all the weapons of D&D to answer what is this weapon, both in history and in D&D, how is it different from the other weapons available, and does it need to be made better, and how can we do so? For today's topic, let's examine a fetching fletched ranged weapon, the dart. Darts are ranged weapons with a short haft made of wood and a metal tip on the end. Measuring 30 to 60 centimeters in length, some variants were fletched with feathers on the tail end. While traditionally thrown by hand, they could also be used with an addle addle or as ammunition in blowguns. Essentially, darts are a weird hybrid between javelins and arrows, and different designs popped up across history that made them operate differently from one another. In prehistory, Darts were used as a precursor to bow and arrow technology. Their specifications are really what set them apart though, as the dart had rather intense constraints for length, diameter, and material quality to be used properly. When they were made properly, they had a range of 70 meters when thrown by hand, and over 100 meters when used with a spear thrower, able to penetrate several centimeters of oak as well. By the time of the Iron Age, the throwing strap made light javelins far easier to use effectively though, and the adoption of bows made arrows far easier to create in large quantities. With these factors in mind, it's believed that the constraints required for the proper creation of a dart made them less efficient to make and use than javelins or arrows. Despite these constraints, we still see many different variants of the dart appear across antiquity. One of the earliest variants we know of is the Roman plumbata. First used by the ancient Greeks around 500 BC, the plumbata was a lead-tipped dart carried by Roman infantrymen from antiquity to the early Middle Ages. Alongside the plumbata, the Macedonian Kestros Fendon, or Kestros, was a sling-launched dart, invented in 168 BC for the Third Macedonian War. Similar to hand-thrown darts of the period, casting one required a specially designed sling with two unequal loops, though its exact specifications are unclear to modern scholars. Outside of Europe, indigenous peoples of Asia, Africa, and Central and South America used the blowgun, a ranged weapon that uses a person's air to blow a dart through a wooden tube. While the strength of the shot was reliant on the lung capacity of the user, the true deadliness of these darts came from being dipped in poison, which would infect the target when struck. In Asia, the rope dart was also developed, though its history is traced to the 19th century rather than antiquity. Mostly seen as a martial art weapon, the rope dart requires an immense amount of control and dexterity to use properly, causing it to be viewed more as a performance art tool than a weapon of war. While darts were largely replaced by javelins, arrows, and later crossbows in the Middle Ages, they do have a legacy that carries on in the modern age. The most prominent use of darts today is the recreational game of darts, where competitors throw darts at a dart board to score points. While common in any bar or pub, competitive play requires the darts to not weigh more than 50 grams or exceed a length of 30 centimeters. Anderson can't live with him. He's looking at double top for an 11 darter to win it. Game he finds shot. it for a 12 darter. Outside of recreation, darts do pop up in modern militaries through the use of flechette ammunition. Commonly seen in shotguns as well as aircraft munitions, these small darts are pointed, fin-stabilized projectiles 
that are typically launched in large quantities and are very effective as anti-personnel weapons. In D&D, the dart is described as a small, sharp implement intended to be used as a ranged weapon, either to be thrown or blown from a blowpipe. While the regular dart has been present since 1st edition, 3rd edition added variants such as the acid dart, barbed dart, and stun dart. In these older editions, the basic dart would cost 5 silver pieces, weighed 200 grams, and dealt either 1d3 or 1d4 piercing damage. In 5th edition, the dart costs 5 copper pieces, weighs around 100 grams, deals 1d4 piercing damage, and has the finesse and thrown weapon properties. On paper, the dart appears to be a ranged reskin of the dagger. A closer look at its mechanics, however, shows that the dart can actually be pretty versatile with how it's applied. The finesse property allows the user to add either their dexterity or strength when making attacks, normally giving dexterity-based classes a melee option while not restricting it from strength-based classes. However, ranged weapons use dexterity for their attack and damage rolls, so as the only ranged weapon with the finesse property in 5th edition, the dart allows the wielder to use either their strength or dexterity for attack and damage rolls, making this a ranged weapon that strength-based classes can use effectively. The thrown weapon property adds on to this by allowing the dart to be effectively thrown with a normal range of 20 feet and a long range of 60 feet. Seeing these properties laid out, the dart appears to be in a really good spot as a thrown option, with admittedly low damage, but widely usable across classes and cheap to acquire. So why does no one really use them? Yes, I know, monks start with darts in their starter equipment, but outside of that, I have never seen any other classes or characters use the dart instead of a bow or crossbow or even javelins. Well, despite the usefulness that they can bring to equipment loadouts, the fact of the matter is that most D&D players like big damage numbers, and when given a choice between a weapon that can deal 1d4 or 1d6 damage, with no other traits that tilt the scales, people are going to choose the higher damage. Sure, the dart is cheap and light, but why carry 10 darts when you can carry one javelin that could deal more damage and has a higher range? Simply put, the dart doesn't have anything that helps it stand out from the other weapons available, causing a perfectly good ranged weapon to get overlooked. So, with that analysis in mind, the dart needs a little love as a weapon in D&D. Sure, we could just use javelins and hand axes for everything, but what if we wanted to play as a ninja-like monk, throwing shurikens and kunai at our opponents? Or maybe we want to play a fighter with a whole jacket full of darts, throwing out waves of projectiles each turn with extra attack. <laughs> If we were to use the dart as it is now, these characters would be hampering their own effectiveness in combat for the sake of roleplay. So let's take a look at what we could potentially do to make the dart stand out more as a ranged weapon. My first suggestion would be to make the dart a melee weapon and add the light weapon property to it. The light weapon property allows a weapon to be used in two weapon fighting meaning that if an attack action is made with a light melee weapon held in one hand, the wielder can use their bonus action to attack with a different light melee weapon held in the other hand. If either weapon has the thrown property, you can throw the weapon instead of making a melee attack with it. Now, if it were possible to do within the existing rules of 5th edition, I'd prefer to keep the dart as a ranged weapon but the underlying point of this suggestion is to give the dart the ability to be wielded and thrown with both hands. 
This grants throwing build characters the ability to rapid fire tons of darts, even at low levels, as their main weapon option, stocking up on them thanks to the darts' cheap cost and low carry weight. Plus, while they're easily replaceable, thrown weapons can be fully recovered on the battlefield, whereas only half of spent bow and crossbow ammunition can be recovered after combat. This makes it efficient and cost-effective to launch multiple darts per turn, compensating for their low damage dice with the sheer volume of attacks that you can make with them. My second suggestion on how to make the dart stand out more is to add a throwing strap as a piece of equipment that, when equipped, increases the range of darts to 30 feet normally and 120 feet at disadvantage. Similar to my suggestion for the javelin and spear, a throwing strap could be used equally on javelins, spears, and darts to increase the range of these thrown weapons at the cost of their potential melee effectiveness. This gives characters who want to lean into a throwing build a piece of equipment that they can work towards to make their thrown weapons as good as other ranged weapons, without extra mechanics or damage numbers that complicate the rules. Plus, being able to use this piece of equipment on multiple weapons gives a lot of variety within the thrown weapon category for what characters can choose. My third and final suggestion on how to make the dart stand out more would be to add in variations of the dart with different damage types. As stated earlier, 3rd edition had three variant darts available, each with different stats and effects. The barbed dart was heavier and critted on natural 18s, 19s, and 20s. The acid dart broke on impact to deal acid damage, and the stun dart broke on impact to release a poisonous gas that could stun a creature. While having different options for ranged weapons and ammunition does increase the complexity of the game as a whole, it also adds way more variety and depth to what players can invest in for their character, as well as allowing them to prepare their tools for specific situations. This could be something as simple as taking an explosive dart to deal fire damage against creatures that are weak to fire, or taking stun darts on a mission to kidnap, I mean, uh, liberate, a minion from the big bad in order to interrogate them later. At the very least, it gives martial characters a means to deal elemental damage, something that is sorely lacking outside of magic and spells in 5th edition. With that last suggestion, that's all the ideas I could really come up with to make the dart a more fun and present weapon option in D&D. As I said earlier, it truly is a good weapon, but it's just not as good as other throwing weapons like the hand axe or javelin since damage dice are one of the most important factors for weapon choice. By adding in options like the ones I suggested, players can have a mechanical reason to choose a weapon with lower damage, allowing for a wider variety of character builds which make the game more fun, varied, and engaging. But with that, we come to the end of today's video on the dart. An overlooked ranged weapon, any problem can be solved if you throw enough darts at it. With how it's laid out now, the weapon tends to be viewed as a glorified dagger, but by emphasizing its strengths as a quick, volume of fire thrown weapon, we can, hopefully, help more characters discover how good of a weapon the dart can be. The thing that I want to know is, what do you think of the dart? Do you like using it as a thrown weapon? Is it already good enough for what it needs to be, or do you have other suggestions for how to make it a more prominent thrown weapon in D&D? You can let me know down in the comments, or you can discuss it on the Outworld Discord using the link in the description. While on the server, you can view our courses that teach the basics of D&D. If you like what we do, supporting us on our Ko-fi helps us keep the server going, and make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to be notified when our videos go live. However, that's all I had for you. Thank you all for watching, make sure to have a great rest of your day, and I'll see all of you next time.